have Diane Rogers. Well, who doesn't like chocolate for a dessert? So, what I want to do is one of my favorites and everybody else's favorites. Nice thing about this recipe is you can easily put it into the freezer and pull them out when you want. And they're really good. Frozen chocolate crepes with a creme on glaze to serve on top. So the first thing you need to start with are the crepes because they need to sit for at least an hour. And what you do is whisk up two eggs really well. And to that I'm going to add a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. And then I'm going to add some cocoa. And the reason I'm putting the dry ingredients in first is so that this will sort of make a paste before I add the milk. Then when you add the milk slowly, you won't have any lumps. And you could do this in a blender too if you want, but it's not necessary. So in goes the cocoa powder. I really like Dutch process. To then we're gonna add a quarter cup of sugar, and we're gonna add a half a cup of flour, and we're gonna whisk that really well. And now we have a very thick paste going. And now, just a little bit at a time, we're going to drop in a little bit of the one cup of milk and start blending that up. And then, once this is completely incorporated, then We'll add just a little bit more. We're just thinning this out slowly so that, like I say, you don't uh, have any lumps in the batter. Because if you have lumps in the batter, then you have lumps in the crepes, and they're really, it's just terrible. So this will avoid all the lumps. I'm coming up with a nice smooth batter. Once it looks like you've got this thin to a nice consistency, which will be about half of the milk, and I do use whole milk, not skim milk. No point, you know what I mean? And then you can pour the rest in all at once and whisk it. Make sure you go all around the sides of the bowl and also to the bottom of the bowl. And that's it. So this has to set for about an hour and then we'll come back and we'll make, oh wait, whoops, 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 we got to add a tablespoon of butter, can't forget that. The butter will help it release from the pan and just adds a little richness to the batter. So a little bit of butter. Anyway, then we'll come back and make the crepes. And so, we'll let that set and I'll be back. So now let's make the second part of the frozen chocolate crepes. And that will be the sauce that goes over the top. So what I have are three and now four egg yolks. Crack them on a flat surface. A couple ways you can get the yolks out is go back and forth shell to shell. Or you can do it in your hands, that's another way. And either way you just want the yolks out. To that, we're going to add a half a cup of sugar. We're going to whisk that around slightly. And then, what we're going to do is take a vanilla bean, which these are really good. They're a little pricey, but they're well worth it. And we're going to cut this down the middle. I'm going almost all the way through the bean. Then, with the flat part of the knife, I'm going to open this up and scrape the seeds out of the middle of the pot. And then what we're going to do is, I want to get the whole bean, take the pod and put it in with the half and half. I have a cup of half of cup and a half of half and half in the back. So that's going to go in there because we want all the flavor out of that pod. Now after you use this pod once, just rinse it ever so slightly to get the milk off of it. Let it dry out and then after it dries really well you can pulverize it. So we've got the eggs, the yolks, or the egg yolk sugar, and the vanilla bean. And now we're going to slowly add the half and half 
just a little bit at a time because we want to temper the yolks. In other words, bring them up to the temperature of the half and half slowly so that we don't scramble this. And after you get about half of the warmed half and half in, then you can dump the rest of it in. I'm going to leave the vanilla pod in the custard mix so that we can get all the flavor and all the seeds out of that. We're going to put this back into the pot and we're going to warm this slightly, making sure to get all of the vanilla seeds out. And what I like to do to make sure is to use a nice flexible little silicone spatula or something like that because the seeds are where the flavor is and get all of them out of the bowl into the pot. And then we're going to whisk this slightly and to keep an eye on it, we're gonna go over, oh, sort of medium low heat until it thickens. And it's not going to thicken all that much, but it will thicken enough to coat the back of a spoon. So we'll let this go. It'll probably take about five, seven minutes, something like that. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's thickened. It's really a good sauce. It's good for so many things, not only the frozen chocolate crepes, but it's good for baked pears, it's good for baked apples, it's good for apple pie, God, you name it, anything that you like vanilla custard on. And now for the good part. Let's make the chocolate mousse that goes into the crepe after the crepes are made. But this needs to set up a little bit too, so we're gonna make this in advance. So it takes a pound of chocolate. All right, just a little hint. I'm taking this off of a big block. Whenever you take it off of a big block or any kind of a large block, use a serrated knife. Serrated knife is the only way to go. And you just carve off, or shall I say shave off, and I like to work off the corners of the block, always creating myself a new corner. Then what we're going to do is take a cup and a half of heavy cream that I have brought to a slight simmer and we're going to put this over the chocolate and the reason for also cutting this chocolate on the fine side is so that it melts well. Then what I'm going to do is slowly stir this with the whisk from the center out just a little bit at a time. And by slowly stirring it, you're getting the chocolate to melt well. And then it slowly comes together, the chocolate blending with the heavy cream. Look at that. Doesn't that look wonderful? Ooh, chocolate and heavy cream, what a great combination. But we need to add a little bit more to it. So to bring out the flavor of the chocolate, and by the way, I do like using bittersweet chocolate for sure. I'm putting a little bit of some Fleur de Sel, just a tiny itsy bitsy bit, not a lot. Then we're gonna put in a teaspoon and a half of some really good vanilla extract. And then whisk that together. Then we're gonna put in six eggs, egg yolks. And whisk this really well. The egg yolks are going to help thicken this a little bit and the heat of the chocolate and the heat of the cream are going to slightly cook those egg yolks a little bit. But oh my God, this is such a wonderful chocolate mousse for the middle of those crepes, you have no idea. So after everything is really well blended, then we're gonna put it in the refrigerator or if you're in a very cool house, you could leave it out, but the refrigerator works better and let it set up a little bit. And it's gonna become relatively stiff. You can make this in advance, do it overnight, at which point you would want to, or in which case when you go to make the crepes, make sure the crepes are at room temperature so that they come apart. And then also bring this to room temperature so that you can get it into the crepe by way of a pastry bag, but that'll be when we put it together. 
Now to finish the vanilla custard sauce, aka creme anglaise, what you want to do is, what I like to do, you could leave it as it is, but I'm going to put this through a strainer just so that I have a beautiful, uh, nice smooth sauce. And this will take out any trace of egg yolk that might not have been mixed thoroughly with the whisk and make a beautifully smooth sauce. I'm going to store this with a vanilla bean in it so that, you know, I can get as much as I can flavor-wise out of the vanilla bean. But we'll just put this through the strainer and then we'll refrigerate it. All it takes is just a couple of two or three tablespoons off of each crop. Though I will say, a lot of people really like to get a spoon and just eat it. But a couple of tablespoons does it. Now, I think just to make sure, I think we have to try this. See what a beautiful consistency that is? And it's a nice, like, just about a little bit thicker than heavy cream consistency. So, we want to try this just to make sure. Mmm. Mmm. Comfort food. Oh my God, that's so good. You have no idea. All right. Time to get out of it. And into the refrigerator it goes. Okay, now for the last part of the crepes. This is the last piece of the puzzle that needs to be cooked or put together. So what I have are three pans. Oh, they're like a little six, seven inch size, smaller pan. And I did use non-stick. It's a lot easier if you don't have seasoned pans. And what we're going to do is cook these over kind of a medium to medium low heat but to ensure that they come out I'm going to put a little bit of butter in the bottom of the pan and get these ready for the crepe batter. Now the thing about this crepe batter is it does have sugar in it so it does have a tendency to burn just by default of the sugar alone so what you want to do is Make sure you're over medium, medium, low heat. When you put this in, if it starts going too fast, then you'll know that you need to turn the heat down. You can't cook these really fast. Okay, so here's pan one. I swirl the butter all around the outside of the pan. Dump a little bit of... All right, so this didn't set, so I can put this up just a little bit. Always takes one or two to get the hang of the pans. We'll go with this one next. And the butter is swirled around the pan. We're going to put a little of the batter. This one can be turned up a little bit too. This will make 12 crepes, so you'll know that when you get to the half cup, then you should have six crepes done with another six to go. So after the bottom starts to set up a little bit, then you want to swirl it all to the outside and to the edges of the pan. Okay, so let's get the third pan going. I'm swirling the butter around a bit. We'll put in a little bit of the batter. And that wasn't quite hot enough. And I can tell because it didn't set as soon as it hit the pan. So we'll turn that batter up a little bit. All right, now this is actually looking really good. But I'm gonna make sure that it's set fairly well before I turn it. If you think you can flip it, go ahead. Um, sometimes it's easier to take it, well, I'm gonna flip it. And it's sometimes easier to do that. With a silicone spatula to help you flip it over, that works really well too. The only trick with flipping as I just did, is you want to make sure that it is fully released from the bottom of the pan and to make sure it's fully set. So this is actually looking pretty good. So I'm going to take this out, put it on a flat plate because you want this going to the flat plate. There's enough butter in this pan that I don't have to add any more to it. And the pan is getting nice and warmed up. So as soon as it hit the pan, it started to set. So I'm swirling it all around to the outside edge of the pan. This one's done. I'm going to flip that. And 
that one's done. We'll flip that. Whoops. Not quite, so I've got to fix this quick so that it doesn't set. Whoops. All right, well, that's close. That'll have to be for the natives. We'll have to eat that one. Oh, this one's looking good. Now this one, now that the pan is warmed up and ready, uh, I'm going to probably let that set a little bit and flip it by hand because it's a little bit thinner now that the pan's warmed up. The crepe itself. This one is still a little bit thick, but we'll let that set. So here's how to do it by hand. Pick it up. Oh, that one looks good. But you want to make sure you've got a silicone uh, spatula as opposed to a plastic because plastic will melt for sure and that's really nasty. So there's one done and this one's released nicely but it's just a little bit, needs a little bit more to set. So while, oh and this one's looking pretty good. That looked excellent, but it needs a little help releasing. So I'm going to do this one by hand. Okay. Then we'll take the second one out, which looks like it's going to be this one, and we're going to overlap it. Not right on top of each other, but overlap it slightly. I'll pour in another one. And that one's ready. See how we're overlapping them around the plate? It'll be easier to pull them off and roll, uh, roll once the mousse is inside. Chocolate takes a little bit to work with and the sugar takes a little bit to work with, but it's really a practice that you want to get good at because these are really good. And then in the non-chocolate you can make crepe Suzettes that are excellent too. All right, so as you can see, they're completely done. They're shingled nicely on this very flat plate. I'm going to refrigerate these overnight and bring them out at room temperature before I roll them, and they'll come off of here really nice. And so, yep, these are gonna be some really good crepes, a really good dessert. I think we'll try a little bit of the mistake, just to make sure. Two thumbs up, it's really good. Okay, to the refrigerator they go. Place the shiny side of the crepe down, then fill the mousse in a Ziploc bag if you don't have a pastry bag, cut off the end, and fill the crepes, pressing from the top of the bag down. And then roll them up, put them on a sheet tray, and put them in your freezer. If you have to make two layers, put something in the middle. It's dessert time. Now this I think everybody is really going to love. There's no two ways about it. Frozen chocolate crepes that I warmed up so they're just a little softened out of the freezer. And a crumb on glaze, you know that wonderful vanilla custard sauce that you can just eat by the spoonful. And some raspberries. And so we're really going to enjoy this. Aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we yeah, are. Absolutely. Yeah. Chocolate. Cheers. 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 Oh, yeah. That's good. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Why are you splitting one? You don't want to split one. Why are you saving another one for us to split? <laughs> that's right. Okay. That's why I already asked if you had any to go. Are you going to cut the sauce? Don't ruin it. Put I mean, the sauce. sauce. We do. Can you, like, make this an injectable? <laughs> 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 <laughs>